in our news bulletin for this evening. Niue hosts the 44th Pacific Island Chief of Police Conference. A power fault in Mutalo triggers off an unexpected power outage to the northern side of the island on Monday. New Zealand High Commission workshops focus on results frameworks as management tools for projects. Students taking the tourism certificate at Niue High School return from a trip of a lifetime to New Zealand as part of their studies. La Kepa Male Law celebrate 20 years of the annual village show days and display of community spirit. 21 chiefs of police from the Pacific have come together in Niue to share, learn and build collective knowledge around policing in the region. Niue Police play host to the annual Pacific Island Chief of Police meeting now into its 44th year. A great amount of planning and effort has gone into the preparations for this high-level meeting that has brought together the region's top policing officials and support staff and spouses who arrived on Tuesday. The conference was officially opened yesterday by the Acting Premier, Honourable Pukotonga Sikili, who noted that good policing is important in the Pacific not only to build increased trust and confidence in our police, but it also encourages more people to become involved in helping prevent crimes in the communities. The new primary school students took centre stage to showcase a piece of UN culture with their ukulele playing skills that also provided a wonderful setting for this regional meeting. We'd like to think anyway that we're part of the Pacific and so we're all, you know, 21 countries all very much aligned with regard to the region as a whole in terms of safety. So uh, that hasn't changed as a result of New Zealand having been the chair uh, and it won't change in the future. So um, while New Zealand does provide some support, we take away just as much as we give when we come to conferences like this. Look, it's been a great conference so far and we've talked about some really pressing issues. Some of the ones that have taken our interest uh, over the last day or so have been domestic and family violence. I think that's a, an issue we're all grappling with across the Pacific. Um, the challenges are common. Transnational organised crime, of course, the impact through the Pacific is having uh, effects on all of our communities. And today we spent quite a bit of time dealing with um, disaster and emergency management, making sure that we all have a similar concept of how we can come together, what support we can provide each other, and what the, the role for police is in taking the leadership aspects of those disaster management and response. This year's theme looks at taking ownership and driving change, and that is reflected in the leadership that must also be displayed. A number of PICP programs were presented during special workshops. The PICP Secretariat, based in New Zealand, and we were able to speak to a Secretariat representative about their work in the region. Well, our task as a Secretariat is to their action items or outcomes from each, each session, and uh, whatever the Chiefs want us to do, we have to make sure that um, progress through and report it back to the Chiefs over the next year before next year's conference. I certainly acknowledge the, the support from the New Zealand Government through New Zealand Aid and uh, New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the New Zealand Police plus the Australian Federal Police and Department of Foreign Affairs in Australia as well. We play a huge role in developing and supporting the programs around the Pacific. So all those donors are certainly recognised through the PLCP. Last year marked the establishment of the executive support team who have the extra responsibility working in the eight work streams towards regional harmony. We're all in this together. Uh, the challenges that are being faced by a small uh, island country like Niue, um, you might think are very different to the challenges that I might be facing in Australia, but they're actually not different. They're very similar. There's a lot of common ground. The scale might be different, but the challenge is the same. So, again, I'll take away that we're all in this together and uh, that we have common challenges to deal with. And I'll also take away a wonderful camaraderie that exists amongst the, the chiefs, uh, an absolute desire to make change, but not just change for now, change that is sustainable. And I think that's the key. All of the chiefs have talked about making changes that last well, belong, well beyond their term as chief. So what we're encouraging here is, um, is um, demonstrating leadership across the Pacific in terms of the police. And um, there's a lot of new uh, programs running through the Pacific under the PICP and was um, a leading change and, um, and developing those particular programs through each jurisdiction. The takeaway is that you've got to work hard at staying connected and uh, you know sometimes um, even though it's an idyllic place it's taking you away from the job at home and that's the same for all of the chiefs but I think you know the real benefit is when your chiefs get together they take so much from each other 
Uh, they learn so much and they give so much and I think you've just got to make sure you make time for that. New Chief of Police Tony Edwards becomes the chair of the PICP for the next year, taking over from New Zealand Police Commissioner Mike Bush. The meeting will conclude with a retreat tomorrow before all delegates depart the island on the Air New Zealand flight in the afternoon. Moisture in ageing power cables in Mutalo was the cause of an unexpected power outage to the northern side of the island, who were left without power for most of Monday afternoon to the late evening. The fault was located in between Manunu from the Mutalo Pini Sports Club and in Konkonmea near Luavasta Makala's residence. Newer Power Corporation workers spent a fair amount of time to restore power well into the evening and a new cable was, that was laid not long ago allowed for a prompt response. Speedo Hetitu of the Newer Power Corporation said it was just as well as these new cables made the job easier. He cautioned the power consumers about such incidents taking place with the ageing cables and similar incidents could happen at any time anywhere around the island. Mr Hejizu expressed his gratitude to the power consumers for their patience while experiencing power shortage for the duration of that time. There were no serious incidents that happened during the power outage. Some consumers were said to have had their dinners earlier than usual, while others experienced water shortage as the water supply to their households depended on the power to deliver the water to their homes. Generic and results frameworks are at the core of training workshops facilitated and organised by the New Zealand High Commission Office this week for heads of department and senior officials. Results frameworks are important for planning effective projects and New Zealand as a development partner provides financial aid to Niwe in various forms that needs to be monitored and evaluated. Accountability for use of public funds is important and these project management tools help measure effectiveness, value and success. Today we spoke with the New Zealand Deputy High Commissioner to find out more about the workshops. The first one that was held yesterday was a generic results framework workshop. Um, results frameworks are a result management tool that helps to identify outcomes, helps to give um, a bit of a plan on how to achieve those outcomes and helps to, um, helps to develop a monitoring system so that we can go back and report um, on what the results are that have been achieved. Um, so that was a bit of a training um, workshop for heads of departments and anyone else involved in any of the um, funding that we provide um, because it is a framework that we use across um, the A program. Um, today's workshop is at a higher level, it's more at a programs um, results framework level and we're calling it the joint commitment workshop and the reason for that is because we have a joint commitment between the government of New A and um, New Zealand that sets out our high level priorities over the next few years. Um, what we've been doing, every you know, we, we have our bilateral talks, we um, have very positive discussions on what our priorities are, what our interests are, where we want to go and this provides us an opportunity to look at those discussions and put together an action plan for how we're going to achieve that. So the results, while it's called joint commitment um, workshop, the results frameworks that we are working on today um, really looks at that high level um, priority um, focus and that will then sit underneath the, um, the joint commitment, the partnership arrangement between the two governments. Newe has several development partners, each with their own structures, models and frameworks, but on the surface these frameworks are meant to help provide a roadmap on ways to achieve set outcomes, provide tools for good monitoring and evaluation, project implementation and reporting. Two separate sessions were held at the scenic Matavai with a good turnout and feedback. The feedback that I've had is that they've been very positive and this is just from the workshop yesterday. We still have the rest of the day to go today. Um, very valuable, um, provides some, some structure, some guidance on how to do effective results management. Uh, there has been quite a few and very justifiable comments that it is a lot to take in in half a day um, and that's exactly it. This is meant to be sitting setting the framework for going forward and from now on um, our staff at the High Commission who are very involved in facilitating and being planning and preparing for the workshops will be the go-to point for officials going forward so that we can continue to provide that assistance um, as, we, as we work with officials on our projects. 
The New Zealand High Commission representative indicated that they are excited and grateful for the time that officials set aside to actively engage in these important discussions that will hopefully contribute to the success for future projects. Three students from Niwa High School and their teacher have returned from a one-week first-hand experience of tour the tourism industry in New Zealand. This class field trip is part of a two-year tourism certificate program that was started by the Niwa Chamber of Commerce last year with the support of government. A challenge was set for students to raise funds for their trip as part of the practical experience as required within their course structure. Niwe Chamber of Commerce Education and Communications Officer Roxafina Falipio has been instrumental in driving this forward and encouraging students to see the potential growth in the tourism sector. The main outcome was the students were able to participate as a tourist and become ambassadors for our country. They were able to um, visit different locations in New Zealand, experience different things, learn a few things within the tourism industry and hopefully be inspired to get themselves involved in the industry and better promote our island as a tourism destination. So the objective was to um, get students to be aware of tourism industry, of the tourism industry in general, um, realise that there are career opportunities within the industry and to consider themselves being involved or taking up a career in the industry. So the objective from that whole idea was that at the end of it all, I want the students, we, both, both the school and the chamber would like the students to take up a career in tourism and contribute to developing and enhancing our tourism industry here in Niue. Their busy one-week schedule and itinerary had a number of site visits in Auckland, Wellington and Rotorua. Since returning, students are recovering from a few ailments, but they have two more papers to complete before they become the first new high school students to attain a tourism certificate qualification. With that goal in mind, it will open up further opportunities for their future career aspirations that will hopefully be aligned with the tourism sector. La Kepa Malinlo celebrated in style last Saturday as they marked 20 years since the village started hosting their annual show day. Food stalls dotted the field and crowds gathered in the early hours of the morning. The day opened with speeches from different village group representatives and there was even a specially made cake decorated in black and yellow, the village colours, plus 20 candles to mark the 20th anniversary since the first La Kappa show day. The show day was filled with beautiful and delicious aromas of food cooking, a variety of different organic produce as well as selections of different handicrafts from the women who pride themselves on the fact that they initiated the show day 20 years ago. This year's main item on display for the women folk was the commonly used mat in the homes, that is the Botopaongo. There were activities like basket weaving, tikka throwing, mini golf and tug of war. But the highlight of the day was the performances from the youth and from families that travelled, especially for the show day. One of the members of the village said that she was very happy that a lot of people showed up for the show day and that celebration of 20 years since the first show was held. The day ended on a high note with a performance from the village youth group and the parade of the village women and their traditionally made mats. And that concludes our news bulletin for this evening.